Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Stupid Deaths. This was sent to me by University Games, uh, and I don't know who the designer is. Charles Darwin was right. He proved that only the fittest survive. This game celebrates the stupidest deaths over the centuries. Players race the Grim Reaper around the game board before the Grim Reaper catches and kills them. Stupid Deaths is full of dark fun where players who are dead right win. Let me show you how to play. So in Stupid Deaths, there are two ways you can win. Be the first player to reach the finish, which is that red space, or be the last player on the board uh, after everyone else has been caught by the Grim Reaper. On your turn, each person takes a turn and someone reads the card. And here's Marie Curie, the first person to win. You read the, you know, birth date, death date. And this one basically says she was celebrated for her pioneering research into radio radioactivity. Unfortunately, they didn't know about the dangers of radiation poisoning. She contracted a deadly bone marrow disease from her continued exposure to radioactive materials. Now, the other players have to use these tokens and think, is that true or false? And they put one of them face down in front of them. Now, is this a particularly stupid death? I don't think so. We'll get into that later. But anyway, uh, once everyone has decided, you flip them over and you see how many people uh, got it right. Anyone who got it right gets to move one space forward on the track. Everyone in this case who didn't, uh, two of them got it wrong. Uh, the Grim Reaper moves two spaces, one for each person who got it wrong. The reader does not move unless all players answer incorrectly. If, in, if that ever happens, then they get to move two spaces on the board. Everyone, everyone else doesn't move, otherwise they don't move. And you just keep going like that. The next player reads one, Stephanie Thomas. She was best known for modeling in the poster for Goldfinger. She was painted in gold, later dying of lead poisoning from the paint. And this keeps moving. Now, if the Grim Reaper ever catches up to you, uh, you lose your first extra life token or passes on a space through you. If that ever happens, uh, you lose that token and you are placed one space ahead of the Grim Reaper. And then you just keep going around until somebody either reaches that red space or what's more likely, everyone else dies. What happens if the Grim Reaper gets a bunch of you at the same time? The rules don't say. So that's fun. I know here's some other examples. Mithridates, he was a soldier, he killed a rival. Um, he was executed by being smeared with milk and honey and left outside to be eaten by bugs. That one is true. Jackson Bernal, the only person ever to be killed by a great white shark on dry land. He found it beached, tried to help it back into the water, but the shark bit him and he bled to death in the sand. This one is false. Uh, yeah, you just try to guess if they're true or false, move around the board or get caught, and that's the game. So this game doesn't really work at all mechanically, and even its concept doesn't feel particularly on point. One glaring problem with the game is that if you are the reader, you can't move unless everyone else gets it incorrect. And if a lot of people happen to get it wrong on your turn, you just get punished because you can't move. And then the Grim Reaper just comes closer to you and it's absolutely through no fault of your own. That and the extra life tokens feel pointless because they just place you right back in front of the Grim Reaper again. So it's like, why even bother? The game's called Stupid Deaths. First off, a lot of the deaths aren't stupid. Like... You would think that with a game like this, a lot of the, you know, fun would be all oh, these ridiculous, silly deaths, and you know, that's where the comedy comes from, but like, Marie Curie dying of radiation poisoning? That's not a stupid death or a funny death, it's just death. And honestly, it's not actually that interesting trying to decide if a death is true or not. It doesn't help that the false ones are usually much more outlandish, so it's like you read this really outlandish death, and you either go, oh, is that really true? Oh, no, it was made up. Cool. Like, I almost think this game would have better served a theme, its theme if it was, like, everyone votes for, like, which death is stupider or which is their favorite and the others who disagree get penalized. I don't know. But just trying to de decide is the death true or not is... Not that fun, and it doesn't help that a lot of deaths aren't that interesting. And the ones that are interesting are just made up. I think the rules for this game are significantly flawed. I think it takes a little too long, and the cards are not particularly entertaining. What you're doing is not particularly entertaining. 
I cannot recommend this game at all.